Good morning and welcome to the LMV3 104 webinar where we will be covering troubleshooting today. The presenter again today is the one and only David Lair and he's going to build on the foundation laid last week to teach us all about how to properly troubleshoot a typical LMV3 system. So David, take it away. Thank you, Steve. Welcome everyone. I'm David. I do training primarily here at the Elk Grove Village Training Center. I'd like to remind you that we have tech support available from 6.30 in the morning till five o'clock, Monday through Friday. And we have an extensive website that I highly encourage you to use for product information, data sheets, brochures, news bulletins, and the contact information on for tech support questions, customer support as well. Today, we're gonna to do troubleshooting. It's the fourth in a series. Um, we're gonna follow that up with two more sections. It's gonna be VFD and PWM offered by the LMV3. And we're gonna close it up with Modbus and the ACS 450 PC software. You can use the LMV technical information as a guide. We're gonna follow along with the book here. This is available as a PDF from the website. Free, if you contact them, you get a hard copy sent to you and maybe many of you have this right now in preparation for the webinar. All right, bring it on down to section six, troubleshooting. Section six, troubleshooting. The LMV3 has an extensive list of fault codes that help clarify the nature of any fault. Section 6.2 describes every fault code in detail and gives guidance how to correct it. This is an example of what the complete fault code looks like. It has the error code. In this case, we're looking at error code two, a diagnostic code, which details, tells us what in particular about the error code and gives us a higher detail on it. What it actually means on the LMV3 system. And finally, how we go about and use a corrective action to repair the fault. When you get a fault on an LMV3, the screen's going to flash between LOCC and LOCD. LOCC, LOCD. Basically, that's telling us the lockout code. In this case, it was three, or a lockout diagnostic, which details it as a detail zero. Sometimes the LMV doesn't lock out, it simply gives a fault that indicates that there is an issue. And it actually gives us an information screen. It doesn't lock out the LMV and it goes INFC and then INFD for information versus a lockout, which is a shutdown. Let's take a look at how to do those fault codes. This would be the Siemens LMV3, would be the 3637, how to read a fault code history. No login is required to do the fault codes. You want to start reading the fault codes by holding the reset button. Hold it, don't let it go. The screen will say info. Keep holding it, don't let go. And then it will say service. Once it says service, you can let go. First thing you see on your screen is 954 flashing. You notice that on the left, the little wrench has a bar indicating that we're at the service level. The parameter is 954 and the value is zero. And you notice that there's a bar above the percent sign, which telling us that we're getting a 0% flame signal. That's because the burner shut down. If you push the plus key, we can move it on. And now we get a parameter 960. 960 shows us the current fuel flow. In this case, it's zero. Do a plus. And we'll move on to the next screen, and that would be 121. 121 shows the manual firing rate. In this case, we don't have a manual firing rate. Do the plus key, and we move on to 922. 922 shows the actual positions of the actuator. This particular parameter has indexes. 00, zero is fuel, zero, 01 is air. We'll look at that later. Do a plus. And we get 936, and 936 shows us the real-time speed of a VFD if we're so equipped. In this case, it's zero, 
And again, we have the bar above the percent saying it's a 0% VFD at the current time. Do a plus 161 shows us the total number of faults. It's a read only, you can't change it. it tells you that this system has experienced 283 faults in its entire lifetime. Do a plus and here we are. And the 700 series, the 700s are the fault history on the LMV3. I'm gonna bring in a fault log table. The history is gonna hold the last 25 faults, 701 to 725. 701 is the most recent fault that's occurred. In this table, we're gonna find a bunch of rows and columns. The columns are gonna be the parameter number, in this case, 701. We're gonna do error codes, which is index 01, diagnostic code, index 02, a class 03, the phase 04, the start counter 05, the output or firing rate 06. And if you're equipped with a dual fuel LMV36, it's gonna tell us what fuel we're on, zero or one. And then we can add in our descriptions. All right, let's take a look at some fall codes. In your screen, you're gonna see it up in three sections. There's the parameter number, in the center is the index, 01, and in this case, the value of this particular parameter and index is 200. We take that 200 and we add it into row 701, because that's our parameter number, and we enter it into column 01, which is our index, and then we enter the value 200. When we looked that up in the book, it's telling us that a fault code 200 is ironically no fault. That just happens to tell us that our condition of the burner is fault free at the moment. If we do a plus, you see the 701 is flashing. When you do the plus, you're gonna index the flashing field. So then we go to 702 and 702 is flashing. That's the second fault in our history. We have the parameter, the index, and the value. In this case, the code value is three. We go down to the bottom and we enter the row number two, the second fault, and we enter the value of three for the error code. And when we look it up in the back, it's telling us that we have an air pressure issue. I want you to hold the enter button for two seconds and release it. What happens is the blinking field shifts from the parameter to the index and now the index is flashing. So now when we do plus or minus, we're gonna increment or decrement the index field instead of the parameter number. Let's push this one up to the next index. We do a plus and release. Now we go to index 02, 02 is flashing. We have our parameter, index 02. In this case, we have a value of zero. Zero is our diagnostic code for the second fault. Diagnostic zero gives us more detail. In this case, zero tells us that the air problem is that the air pressure was off when it should have been on. And we log that in the table below as air pressure off. We do a plus, and since the index field is flashing, we move over to index number three. In this case, the index value is zero. Zero is the class, class zero. The higher the number, the worse the fault. In this case, it happens to be a lower level fault. It was a purge fault. If you had an air pressure fault, during run, it would be a higher class, meaning a more severe error. We log that in the bottom of the chart. Row number two, second fault. Column number three, error class zero. Do a plus. Move to the next index. The next index, 04, gives us a value of 36. This is the phase in which the problem occurred. The phase is 36 which happens to be dry to the ignition position. That's when our air failed, when we drove the air damper down to low fire for ignition. We enter that value into the chart, 36, into the column 04 for the index 04. 
we do a plus. Now we move to index 05. Index 05 shows a value of dot dash dot dash. This is an indication on the LMB3 saying that the value in there is gonna be much bigger than those four spaces allowed. So it's too long to display. What we need to do is to hold the enter button for two seconds and let go. And when you do, the screen will transfer over to the value. In this case, we have a value of 1,000 or 13,857. That's the cycle count on this burner when this error occurred. We go down to our chart on the bottom, we put in 13,857. And now we know of what cycle this one occurred. There's no time and date stamp, but there's a cycle counter. So we know how frequently this problem is occurring. If we push enter again, we'll return back to the index five. Once we're back on index five, now we can hit the plus and move it to index number six. Index six also shows us that the value is a little bit too big to display, dot dash, dot dash. Again, we hold the enter button two seconds and then release. And then we get a screen here that shows 100 and or 10 rather, and it's 10%. Notice the percent bar is lit up on the bottom and the 10 value comes up and it's telling us what units this is being displayed in. We go down to the bottom of the chart. We put in 10% firing rate or output. We hit enter again, and then it returns us back to the index six where we were before we read the value. We do a plus that moves us to index 07, if so equipped on a dual fuel LMV 36. That index value of zero means that we're firing fuel zero when the fault occurred, because we could be firing fuel zero or fuel one on a dual fuel LMV 36. We also enter that into the table. Now we know that the second most recent fault on this LMV was an air pressure problem issue. Pressure was off when it should have been on. The class was zero. It occurred in phase 36 when we drove down to low fire. So apparently that air pressure switch is set a little bit too stiff. And when we bring the air damper down to ignition, then the air pressure switch falls open. We have to lighten the setting on that air pressure switch. It was start number 13,857, and it occurred at 10% firing rate, which means we were getting ready to do ignition. And the fuel that happened when it occurred was on fuel number zero. Quite a bit of detail on one fault. The LMV is very good at telling you exactly what happened. You just really got to want it. All right, now we're back to our ta fault table. We're on fault uh, parameter number 702, index 07 was fuel zero. If we press escape and let go, now the index field went solid and the parameter field is again flashing. So now when we say plus, the parameter indexes to the next parameter. Now we're on the third most recent fault. In this case, index 01 has a value of two. We go down to the third row. Two is a no flame. So we enter number two and we say that we had a flame fail for the third fault on this particular LMV. Continue on the same way we did for the remaining faults and fill in the fault chart. A maximum of 25 faults can be logged into the LMV3. It rolls out the faults so that the last oldest fault goes away and the newest fault goes on the top of the list. So it keeps rolling out the faults as they occur. This completes how to read the fault code history. 
And it also completes the webinar today on troubleshooting the LNV3. Once you get the fall code, all you gotta do is look it up and you got the solution in the chapter six. Next week, we're gonna do VFD and PWM. And we're gonna complete the thing with section seven and eight, which is the Modbus and the ACS 410 software. We'll take questions and answers. Steve, I'll turn it back to you. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Dave. That was some really good information and a nice overview on how to troubleshoot an LMV3 system. Um, you know, while you're giving your presentation, we got it. We had a few questions come in, and so let's jump in really quick and get these answered. So the first one we had was, if my AZL gets damaged, will I lose my fault history? All right, I had my microphone off. Sorry about that. Great. <laughs> no problem. Great question. I'm glad somebody asked that. So what this emphasizes is the fact that the LMB3 retains all of the fault codes in the LMB3 chassis itself, not the AZL. Even though the AZL displays them, the fault codes are stored in the LMB3. So you can put any AZL from any of the products on the any LMB3. And when you go to the fault history, you're gonna see the history that is actually available on that exact LMB3 itself. It's contained in the LMB3, which is great. It travels with the unit. Any other questions, Steve? Yeah, we had one more. Um, do I need to log into the AZL to gain access to the fault history? No, you don't. And that's the beauty of it. It's very convenient to go in you know, logging in is a bit of a process and it's simply not required. The fault history is just an information only. So you can simply go into it just like we did in the beginning. You don't have to log in at all. You can take your customer, for example, and just tell them to hold that key and go in there and tell them what you see. By doing that ahead of time, before you even leave for the customer site, he can tell you what's going on and that would prepare you to bring the proper equipment to do the repair. If he's got flame issues, you might bring a spare scanner. If he's got actuator issues, you might bring an extra actuator in case there's a actuator damage or something. Um, additionally, if your service guy wants to keep an AZL on his truck, he can always go into a unit and the LMB3 doesn't need an AZL ever to run to begin with. So he can always plug his AZL into the unit and read out the fault history and then remove the AZL at the end if, if he so desires. So it's good for your technicians to have a AZL on the truck available so that they can always go read the codes on any particular unit. Any other questions, Steve? Um, no, it looked like we covered them all. So uh, again, for joining us this morning, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope you have a great week.